everybody, welcome to Brussels. I assume that if you clicked on this video, it's either because you're planning to move to the city or the YouTube algorithm took you to my strange corner of the internet. Either way, hi, glad to have you here. In today's video, we're going to go over some of the best and worst parts about living here in the Belgian capital. And this video is actually part two, because in part one, I covered a lot of the low hanging fruit that people often complain about when living in Brussels, such as the crap weather. I mean, case in point, it's early August as I film this and I'm in long sleeves and pants. So <sighs> people also complain about the constant construction and the high price of food. So if you want a more complete picture of the city, then I recommend you go watch that video after watching this one. On today's menu, we have a balance of positive and negative points, three of each to be exact. And I'll do my best to alternate between positive and negative so as not to bum you out or deter you from moving here. Because I enjoy living here. I have found my groove and my peeps, but I also understand that this city is not everyone's cup of tea. But it's my hope that with this video, if you are planning to move here, you come up prepared. You know the good and the bad. We're starting things off quite strong here with the first negative slash not entirely glamorous point, which has to do with trash collection. I've never lived in a city that does trash collection quite like Brussels. Starting with waste sorting, you have about five different colors of bags. You have one for paper, one for compost, one for plastic and metal, one for miscellaneous, one for garden supplies. And that's just to my knowledge, it's just what we use. And once you've sorted your trash into each of those different colors of bags, the fun part comes when the bags need to be disposed of. And I say that this is funny because each bag has a different collection day and the collection days of bags differ based on commune. So where I live, for example, we have two main trash days. On one day, we have white and blue, so miscellaneous and plastic. And the other day we have compost, paper, and miscellaneous. I'm pretty sure there's also a separate day for garden waste bags, but I can't be bothered for that. I don't have a garden, so that's easy. All right, I wanted to get the shop because of the trash, but it stinks, so let's move. The unfortunate part of all of this is that there are no garbage bins in which the bags can be put. So there are about two days a week where the streets are just filled with trash until the garbage men come to collect it. And while the garbage collectors do their job just fine, methinks that there may be a slightly more hygienic way to take care of things. Because I've lived in other cities where this is not the case and things don't smell quite as bad on the days when trash is meant to be picked up. I don't know if there's like a suggestion box that I could put in with my commune somewhere, but if I need to like ask for a specific garbage bin, I don't know. And as I come from the US, I'm used to having one garbage can per household in which you put all your shit. And then once a week or twice a week, you roll the can out onto the street and the garbage collectors come to pick it up. That way all of the trash is contained and it's not spewing and like marinating on the street overnight. Again, the point of this video was to inform you, not gross you out. So that's enough to be said for trash. Let's move on to the next point. In a city that's famous for bureaucracy and red tape, I've actually had a surprisingly positive experience using my Belgian ID. Now, of course, there's paperwork and patience required to get the Belgian ID as a non-European or non-Belgian. But once you get it, things are so much easier. Nearly everything is done via your Belgian ID. Your financial records, your social security, your work status, hospital bills, all of that goes through your ID. And as a freelancer here, it was really important in setting up my business to make sure that I had this so that I could open a bank account here, start contributing to social security, all of those things. And I have to say that for the most part, the institutions do talk to one another. So as an example, two years ago, my boyfriend and I moved house and all I had to do was alert the commune of our change of address. And then from that, there was a trickle down effect and they alerted all of the subsequent institutions, which ended up saving me a lot of time because I didn't have to go to every single individual institution and tell them that we had moved. All I had to do was alert my commune and they took care of it for me. And one little caveat to this is that we did move within the same commune. So this is of course different if you're moving from one commune to the next because those don't talk to each other. They're completely different districts, so you're gonna have to probably do all that on your own. <laughs> Brussels is a dynamic and cosmopolitan city, and this attracts a lot of different people from a lot of different cultures around the world. And while this has many benefits in the way of food, culture, music, language, all that jazz, one place where this becomes a glaring negative is on the road. 
Who wants to say that there is a colorful spectrum of driving styles here? There are some drivers here from countries like Germany, for example, that are very orderly and very respectful and they obey the traffic laws to the letter. And then there are drivers from other countries that take traffic signs as more of a suggestion than a law. And when you combine this with the constant and ubiquitous construction of the city, who you are in for a proper cluster <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. Now you may have clicked on this video as research for your upcoming move to Brussels, in which case I want you to come very well prepared, which is why I'm going to share a little secret with you to help you furnish your Brussels pad. There's a fabulous secondhand market here called Troc, and every commune has their own. And what's cool is that it's filled with unique items that are constantly in rotation because that's the nature of secondhand things is people donate them, people like me buy them. And I have a special place in my heart for Trok because, as I said, Robert and I moved house about two years ago and we had to furnish our new place entirely from scratch. Because this stuff is secondhand, it's all really affordable. However, you do have to be willing to hunt a little bit to find the real gems. Actually, on the day of our move, we rented a van and we went to, I think, four different communes to check out the different troks because we were so determined to find really cool stuff. And we did. In the end, we found our coffee table, we found a stand for our TV, a bookcase, and even this really cool barrel from a 1968 fair here in Brussels. And I mean, no shade to Ikea, but you definitely can't find this stuff in Ikea. So if you are the kind of person that likes to hunt and is willing to work a little bit for your pieces, then definitely check this place out. I think that this next point has become somewhat of a running joke amongst people who live here, which is that shops have very odd operational hours. And I should specify here, it's not just stores, it's any office of business. So that includes things like the post office and the commune offices, anything where you need paperwork done, have really less than convenient opening hours. If you're a working adult, it's really hard to get things done here. I mean, the post office has super weird hours. I think it's from like 10 to 1 p.m. and then they have an hour for lunch and then they go back from two to like 4.30 or five, which if you're working standard hours, it's super hard to get your stuff done in that window. Not to mention about 90% of stuff here is closed on Sundays, which is not great. I've actually had a few really funny encounters going to different stores about an hour before established closing hours and been turned away. It's inexplicable. I mean, where I come from, that would never happen. But I come from the land of 24-7 service. Customers always right. So I'm in a different place. That's totally fine. Is it the end of the world? No. Is it highly annoying? Yes. Can we adapt our schedules around it? Also, yes. Driving jokes aside, the multi-culti nature of this city makes life here extremely exciting. There's a club for almost any hobby or interest that you could have. So if you are new to the city, I'm sure it won't take long at all for you to find your peeps. Just to illustrate, I have a good friend here named Sasha, who is originally from Slovakia and is married to an Irishman, which is very Brussels of them. And Sasha loves all things Irish. Clearly, I mean, even their men. And she has taken a special interest in Gaelic football, which is both obscure and awesome, and has found a club here with which she can play once a week, and they go on traveling competitions, she gets beers with the girls, they talk about all things Irish culture, which is fabulous. So one, that's great for Sasha, go her. But two, it's to illustrate that even if you are new to a city, especially if you're new to a city, it's really hard to make friends as an adult. There's a club here for everyone. Even if your interest is as obscure as Gaelic football, you're gonna find your crew. You're gonna be in good company. And just last week, I tried bouldering for the very first time, which is a fancy word for indoor climbing, with a good friend of mine from Animo Studios. Animo Studios is the studio that I work at here, teaching about 10 to 15 classes a week. So check down below for my schedule. It's a great time. If you're new to Brussels, then definitely come by. We have a little party there disguised as a workout. Our workout disguised as a party. That's what I meant to say. And I was amazed to find that there's a whole bouldering community here that I didn't even know existed. I mean, clearly it was my first time going, so now I am aware of its existence. And I was so pleasantly surprised to see something like that thriving. It's filled with people who are supportive of one another. They are joined together by a common interest and they even have monthly competitions, which is super cool. And one more piece of community that I wanted to mention here is my animal family. I've been working with them for about two years and while on the one hand it may just be a gym, it really has become a touchstone or a big 
sense of community for me here because this is not my native city. And uh, throughout my time working there, I've made some really good friends. I have wonderful colleagues and I've gotten to know the students on quite a personal basis. You know, I keep up with them and their injuries and their families. And it's really cool to have a place to go each day where I feel like my work is meaningful and I'm able to have a positive impact on people's lives. As I said in the intro, I really enjoy living in Brussels. And all of the quirks that I mentioned here as negatives are really just par for the course. In my time living here, I've made some wonderful friends and have found work that is meaningful to me. So if you are planning a move to the city, I wish you all the best. And if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to drop them down below. Catch y'all back here super soon. Ciao!